this man was being argued about and he's they're flawed because they had the wrong foundation but man is inherently evil in romans chapter one remember he started with the real bad people then he got to the, the the moral man then he got the jew who should know better all of his laws okay that's the way god sees it okay we're in the book of job chapter 38 we're going to start in verse number what one the lord answered job out of the whirlwind and said who is this that darkeneth counsel thy words and knoweth without knowledge? Gird up thy loins like a man, while I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Now, I'm going to read some things to you this, this evening. This uh, I want to kind of go back and look at. I want you to go back and look at chapter 10 of the book of Job. Just very hurriedly. Just one, there's many of these places. He said, my soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, do not condemn me. Show me wherefore thou contendest with me. In other words, why do you contend with me? Is it good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress, that thou shouldest despise the work of thine hands and shine upon the counsel of the wicked? Hast thou eyes of flesh or seal thou as a man? Are thy days as the days of a man? Are thy day, man's days? Thou that inquirest mine iniquity and searchest after my sin. Job is the only person so far that has reached out to God and all of a sudden God answers, right? God answers. But now I'm going to ask you this. Has Job done any sin in the eyes of God when he started this whole thing off? What was his words about Job? Perfect man, upright, fears God, shuns evil. All those, right? So Job has been making a lot of statements. So how does God address what he has said? Now I want you to, I'm going to, I'm going to read through this and it's a lot to read, but I want you to get the flavor of why God said. So when you go back and look, Job has said a lot of things, pretty much Job is, I'm not going to talk about the friends, but Job, is, he says to God, he says, where are you? Why don't you come? Right? That's pretty much what he has said to God. What do you do? Why don't you come and help me? Why don't you defend me? What have I done? He keeps talking to God over and over and over. Watch how God's response is. Job, good if you loins like a man. And I'm going to talk to you. And here are the words of Job, of God. By the way, we've been waiting all this book to get to this. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Job, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? If thou declare if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shout up a door. Oh, who shut up the sea with doors? When it break forth as it is out of a womb. When I made the cloud, the garment thereof, the, the garment, gar, garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling for it, and break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors. No, when I fixed my limit for it. She told her how far it could go and how far it wouldn't go. And said, hitherto shalt thou come, but no further. And here shall thy proud ways be stayed. I told it, I made the waves, I made the ocean. We know it's the second day of creation. He separated the waters. He put boundaries there. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know his place? So far, what would you say that God saw? What, what sin in specific is he going after Job for? What is it? What is he trying to say to Job? Faith. About what? What kind of faith? Faith in God. Pretty much what God is saying. Okay, look, you're questioning me, and what I'm going to tell you is this: You want to know where? Where you ask me where am I? I think the better question is, who am I? Job, do you know who I am? You really, let me tell you who I am. Who am I? Let me tell you. You ask me, who am I? I'll tell you who I am. 
That's what he's responding. You see, Job, um, you asked for me to show up. Do you have the right to talk to me? Are you on my level? Did you command the seas? Did you make the world? Did you do these things? By the way, you don't think he does it over and over and over and over. Listen, how he puts it here. And it, verse number 12. I want to ask you about the earth itself. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know its place? Did you make the morning that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it? No, you didn't do it. It is turned as clay to see to the seal, and they stand as a garment. He said, it takes on the form of clay under a seal and stands out like a garment. Why? For the wicked. And from the wicked, their light is withholden, and the high arm be broken. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? You know the spring in the sea where the water comes from? Have you entered into it? Hast thou walked and searched the depth? Have you walked down through the depths of the sea? Have you know where everything's at? Hast thou entered there? No. Has, have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Have you been there? In other words, uh, are you... Is, are, are you like me? You talk to me as if you, you need me to talk to you. The first thing God goes after Job and says, do you know who I am? And he's doing what? It's not just who am I that God is saying. He said, look, let me tell you what the difference. There is a difference, Job. There is a difference. If I never speak to you again, I'll still be God. Now, why would he say this? Do you not know, brothers and sisters, that looking at the ocean, looking at the sea, looking at the way, you can tell there's a God. You know there's a God from creation. What how do the stars do like they are? By the way, where do we get our light from? Fire. Does fire give light? Fire gives light, right? Light a fire at nighttime, it gives light, right? What is the sun? Ball of fire, isn't it? Yeah, well, we get light, and where is it from? Here, that's where it emanates from. Try to define what a light is. Is it, is it a particle or is it a wave? Nobody knows. Job, did you do that? As God would say today, are you on my level? Hast thou perceived the breadth of the earth? Declare if thou knowest. Do you know why it is? Even when man learns so much about the earth, he still doesn't know. In other words, did you create? Man will go and tell you, hey, we can tell you how far it is around the earth. We know what the speed of light is. I can tell you this, this, and this. Okay, great. Did you make it? No. I discovered it. Oh, yeah. You discovered what? What somebody else buried years ago? You didn't do it. So God asked Job, out of the whirlwind, by the way, out of the whirlwind, are you the one that darkens counsel by words without no knowledge? I'm going to demand of you, and you're going to answer me. No. He says, "Where?" verse 19, where is the way where light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? Do you know where light comes from? Do you know where it dwells? Do you know any of these things, Joe? No, I don't know, Lord. I, I really don't have a, a, a good understanding of this. Verse 20, that thou shouldest take it to the bound thereof, and that thou shouldest know the path to the house thereof. Knowest thou it because thou wast then born, because of the number of thy is great? In other words, you know where light comes from? Hey, maybe you was born at that time. Were you born back then and remember all of this? And that's one of the things God, we always say. Well, the earth is so many years old. Were you living then? That's really what he means. Brother, uh, read that verse from the NIV. That verse uh, number uh, 21. Yeah. You're talking with me. Surely you were born back then, right? You were born in those days. You know what? <laughs> was you back then when it started? Surely you know these things. 22. Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow, or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? By what way is the light parted, which scattered the east of wind upon the earth? All these are things that he's asking that God knows that he doesn't know, but he asked them anyway. Why? Things Because sometimes you say, well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Right? 
This is a, it's a famous movie line, okay? Anybody ever seen Space Jam? Michael Jordan. Ain't that a famous movie? Don't you love it? You know, you, you, you think you're good, and you really like, think you're good, and you just got to love Bill at the end of the show when they're playing at the end, and, uh, and, and Bugs tells him you can do about anything. Why didn't you tell me this to start with? And he goes, and, my, and the, the great Bill Murray says, throw him on, throw him on, Mike. And Mike goes across him up like this. Goes, oh, that's okay. You got it. You got it. I got it. He backs off. It's one of those things that's hit me so real. He's like, oh, no, Mike, go ahead. Go ahead. You got it. I can't do any of those things. And all that you just saw the greatness of the man going to the hoop, and he's way up in the air. He's like, no, oh, no, no, okay. I mean, that's that kind of awe when you just back off and like, you know what? I <laughs> hush my mouth. I don't. Wow, did I really say what I saw? I didn't. I, I'd forgotten about this. You know, I forgot how good you were. I forgot about this, Lord. That we take God for granted is what I'm saying. You take Him for granted. Well, He'll forgive me. Well, He'll make it right. Well, he forgave me before, he'll forgive me again. Verse 25, who divided the waters? That's chapter, uh, that's the second day of creation. Who has divided the channel of the overflowing seas? Who has divided a water course for the overflowing of the waters or a way for the lightning and the, th the thunder to cause it to rain on the earth where no man is, on the wilderness wherein there is no man? to satisfy the desolate and the waste ground, to cause it to bud and the tender herb to spring forth. By the way, the Indians used, they used to say the Indians had a rain dance. Did it work? Oh, yes, it did. You can't say it, say it. I got more evidence it didn't work than you do. You got legend. I got a Bible. You don't command God to do anything, right? Can the pottery tell to the create the man that the potter why hast made thou made me such? No, you don't tell God what to do. You pray. God blesses us. God's good to us. Brothers and sisters, he said, did you do any of these things? Did you bring water? You couldn't make it rain. Verse 29, out of whose womb called, came the ice and the hairy frost of heaven? Who hath, who, hath, who hath gendered it? In other words, who made it, Job? The waters are hid with the stone and the face of the deep is frozen. Wow. Hey, you, he, Job, you can't do none of these things. By the way, he's going on and on and on at ad nauseum, so to speak, with that. Ad like, Job, are, are you anything like this? I mean, you can see Job, like, I'm, I'm sure Job is just so glad that God showed up, that God's talking at least. But he's laying him out like, um, you're talking to me like I need to show up. I need to do so-and-so. Why don't you come? And so God's saying, who am I, Job? Who am I? And he's telling them who he is. Let's go to the last one here. Look above your head. Canst thou bind the sweet influence of Pleiades and loose the bands of Orion? Talking about the stars in the heaven. Can you do that? Can you bind the sweet influences of this one or loose the bands of the other? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season? Canst thou guide Arcturus and his son? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the, of the earth? Can you tell me where the stars should be, where they should hang, where, who should go first? Do you tell them where to go, where to turn around, who goes around what orbit? Do you do those, Job? Well, well, I didn't do that. Canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds that the abundance of water may cover the earth? Can you tell, hey, rain. Is it rain? No. Job, do you do those things? Can you do these? No, you don't lift up your voice and do those. You're not a weather man. You don't make the weather. Canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds and bring water? No. Canst thou send lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, here we are. <laughs> no. Can you do this? Send out lightnings that they may go and say to you, here, here we are. You can't make lightning and then it should. You can't. Everybody thinks they can do these things. Movies will tell you that. By the way, you got all the Marvel comic, all the DC comics, and everybody talks about, oh, y'all don't remember this year, but in the, in the cartoon series of the Avengers, we have a guy that does gravity called Gravitron. If y'all remember, Gravitron controls gravity, right? Thor controls the lightning, and no, it doesn't work like that. Only God controls the lightning. Job, can you do this? No, I can't, Lord. 
And finally, verse number 36. Who hath put wisdom? Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts? And who hath given understanding to heart? Who can number the clouds and the wisdom? Who can stay the bottles of heaven? When the dust groweth into hardness, and the clouds cleave fast together, wilt thou hunt the prey for the lion and feel the appetite of the young lions? Do you do that? Do you keep the animal kingdom in check? Wilt thou hunt the prey? No. Verse 40. When they couch in their dens and abide in the covert to lie in wait, do you do that? Who hath provided for the raven his food? When his young ones cry unto God, they wonder for lack of meat. Who takes care of them? I do. Job, he is a, who, Job, who am I? That's his question. Job says, where are you? And he looks at Job, but tell me, who am I? Because you've forgotten who I am. Would you even plead with God? Would you even plead him? Well, I got it, God. Knowest thou the time when the, what is it? He's still on going with this whole thing, ain't he? He's not finished with it. No, he's not finished. You see, you, the first thing you would think is going to happen is God shows up and says, I got you, Job. I'm going to get them three friends for you right now. I'm going to take care of them. And he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't. Because, you know, Job, this is a good teaching point. It's something you can learn. Something you need to know. Because Job did not know this. He does not. The guy begins here. The animals. Knowest thou the time when the wild goats and the, of the rock bring forth? And canst thou mark when the hinds do calf? Can you tell me how long it takes for a, a calf to come forth? How long does it take a dog to be born? How, how many months is it for a human being to be born? Nine months. How about a dog? Nine. Two. 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 I'm not saying it's two. Twelve? Two. Maybe I was wrong. Look it up on Google. Yeah, you, you, can Matt. you can call Matt. Yeah, brother Matt would know. <laughs> he does all those things. But he says, when a cat, when it, when, when an animal is going to have a cat, how long does it take? And you're going to say, I don't know, Lord. They bow themselves. They bring forth their young ones. They cast out the, of their sorrow, out their sorrows. The young ones are in good light, liking. They grow up with grow up with the meal or the corn, and they go forth and return not unto them. Guess what? They have babies. They grow up. They eat. They grow up, and they go out. How, does, how long was it? Could you find it? Two months. Ah, I see. Brother Glenn ain't just that far off. Yeah. Again, my point is, he's asking Joe, Joe, do you know these things? You got Siri or Google to look it up? No. You don't know these things. Joe, do you understand all these things? And by the way, do you let them grow up? Can you make them grow up and then leave and have their own families? No, you don't do that. You don't run the animal kingdom. Who runs that? Do you think it runs by itself? I do that. And by the way, did you know what God did to man? He put the fear of man in the animals. We read that, didn't we? Yeah. He said, did you do those things? Have you done this? Verse 5, who hath sent out the wild ass or donkey free? Who hath loosed the bands of the wild ass or donkey? Whose house I have made the in the wilderness and the barren land his dwelling. Yeah, I put it out there for him. I did it for them. You know who takes care of him? Yeah. He says, he scorneth the multitude of the city, neither regardeth the crying of the driver. He says, he scorns the tumult of the city. He does not heed the shouts of the driver. What? He can't do nothing with him. He does what he wants to do. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searches after the green thing. Will the unicorn, and that's something uh, different, of course, my Bible says an ox. Is that what yours says? Verse 9. It's a different kind of a beast, they tell us. Um, while he says, will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? Cast thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow? Or will the howler of harrow the valleys after thee? No. Will thou thrust him because his strength is great? Or will thou leave thy labor to him? No, you can't do anything with the animal kingdom. 
Do you know anything about how these animals act and why they do what they do? Well, we studied so and so and so and so. What makes them like that? Well, we don't know why. That's what, well, that's the way we understand them well. We know what they like, what they don't like. Okay, what makes them like this? We don't know. Why do they like to do it? I don't know. Why does the sloth go upside down and hang? I don't know. How does the giraffe get a long neck? I don't know. Evolution doesn't explain it. Why does he have a long neck? Ah, I don't know. All the things that you think about, you can't explain. And that's what he's just going on and on and on and on concerning it. He says, Wilt thou believe, believe him that he will bring home some thy seed and gather it into your barn? <laughs> no. You can't trust it, can you? No. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's like a joke. Do you really think he's going to take care of you? No, he does what he pleases. You don't understand a thing about, you don't understand the ox. You don't understand the donkey. You don't understand how a, a, a deer has its calf. You don't understand any of these things, Joe. You don't. The animal kingdom, you don't understand. Gave us thou goodly wings unto the peacocks or wings and feathers to the ostrich. Did you do that? Which leaveth their eggs in the earth and warmeth them in the dust and forget it not the foot may crush them. And that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear. He's pointing out uh, animals, how they're made, why they're made. And it's like, Job, you don't understand these things. You call on me as if I should show up. When you look at yourself, compare yourself. What's the difference between me and you? Who am I? How do you know who you are? You got to know who God is. I'll ask you this question. Do you know if you're good or bad? I don't know. Let God show up. Uh, Eve ain't good enough. Let's hide. Right? God's presence tells you whether you're boldly coming to the throne of grace or whether you're hiding from the face of God. When God shows up, when you find out who he is and what he's done, is this God? Yes, yeah, God. Now, suddenly, you know who he is. And Job's going to say, oh, yeah, uh, I, 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 man. what's the first thing you're going to do in that next chapter? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. No, I'm going to make sure. He puts his hand over his mouth. I ain't taking my hand down. I might slip up and say something. I ain't going to say nothing. He don't even trust himself to say a word. Puts his hand over his mouth because he knows this. He does none of these things. No. In verse number 17, because God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted her understanding. What time she lifted up herself on high, she scorned at the horse and his rider. No, she doesn't understand. She don't have those things. God deprived them of the wisdom. They don't have it. Now, I'm not going to take time and go through all these here. It's just important. I want you to get the big picture, what he's saying to him, okay? Hast thou given the horse strength, verse 19? Hast thou clothed the neck with thunder? Canst thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory is in his, no in his nostrils. This is terrible. Verse 25. He paweth in the valley and rejoiceth in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. He mocketh the fear and is not afraid, neither turn his back from the sword. Yeah, a horse go right into battle. It doesn't bother. He goes straight on. The quiver rattleth against him. The glittering spear and the shield. He swallowed the ground with fierceness and rage. Neither believeth he that he is that it is the sound of the trumpet. He saith to the trumpet, "Ha ha!" And he smelleth the battle the far off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. What makes a horse do that? Job, do you know? No, can't stop. Verse 20, can you make him afraid? No, you can't. Because he'll go out, he, he has no fear at all. No, you can't make that kind of animal. He is not afraid. In fact, he mocks at fear. Ha ha. He smells a battle and the thought doesn't bother him. Look at the birds. Verse number uh, 26. Doth the hawk fly by wisdom and stretch out our wings toward the south? By the way, how does a bat fly in a cave at night with no eyes? Ears, radar, right? They, they send out a signal 
a, a, a sound and it comes back and tells you how far away it is, right? Who designed that, Joe? Took a man a long time to figure that out, didn't he? The Grand Teton, we actually, the Grand Teton Valley, my wife and I went, excuse me, I, I made her look at it. We uh, took a tour of the uh, monument, the interesting monument valley. Monument Valley in uh, uh, it's Utah, Utah. Everything Monument Valley. Okay, Monument Valley is desert, and out in the middle of the desert, you have these great, big, tall, like a mountain, like just rock, and then it's flat everywhere else. And you go to, and there's another great big one here. And they're like monuments st sticking out in the middle of nowhere, and it's long. And, the, and by the way, that long road goes down into it. It's where Forrest Gump was halfway and he stopped running. I guess it became a famous place. They had to put a, they paved the road out and put a big turnaround out there because everybody stops and takes photographs when Forrest Gump stopped it. Beautiful place. Who makes all those things? God made all those things. No, you can't do any of these things. The hawk flying? No, you don't do that. Does the eagle mount up at thy command and make her nest on high? Does the eagle move because you tell her to move? No. She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock, and from the strong place, from thence she seeketh their prey, and her eyes behold afar off. Her young ones also suck up blood, and wherein they're slain, there is she. You don't manage none of this. I manage it all, every day, all day. I do all these things, okay? All the things that God is saying, Job, you know who I am. Do you really know who I am? Now, finally, he gets to the big one, the chapter chapter 40. He's going to the, the big power, okay? Now, there are two animals here, of course, that we want to look at, and nobody really knows what these animals are. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? That is the point. You see, what started all this here, do you know who I am? Are you, knowing this now, you contend to tell me what to do. God, you need to come help me. You got to tell me, you contend with me to tell me what to do. Listen to this verse. Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. The man that tells you, tell me what I need to do. You never tell, well, you need to do so and so and so and so. Don't you hate when people do that to you? Now, you know, as much pride as we try to fight off, there's some pride in us when people tell you that, you know? They come and tell Sister Helen, Sister Helen. Um, you know, if you do it this way, you can really make a good cake. You do a good job, but you really don't. I can show you how to. I'm experimenting how many years? You just turned 18 years old and you're going to instruct me? You know, things like that. I mean, it's that kind of thing. Tell Sister Beck how to clean a house, how to do so and so, how to make this work. No, you'll never do it. But that's what is, God is like that we said. Knowing all this here, you're contending with me to instruct me. You're going to tell me what I need to do. Then Job answered the Lord and said, behold, what? I am vile. And they're going to try to tell you some other word. What's the word it uses in your Bible? Does it say vile? Unworthy? That's what everybody says when you know who God is. Who am I, Job? Who am I? When God gets ready to tell Job who he was, guess what Job says? I know who I am now. When he tells them who God is, the first thing he says, I know who I am. <laughs> I'm vile. You see what happens? When you come to God, it's either going to make you mad or make you glad. You're either going to be lost or you're going to be saved. You, it's a time of decision. You have to make a decision. First thing Job says, I am vile. I will lay my hand to my mouth. <clears throat> I can't take it back. I'll make sure I don't say nothing else. This is how he saw it. I'm vile. And watch, look, and what shall I answer thee? What can I say, God? What in the world could I say? I just found out that I've been ignorant. Oh my, can you, I bet he can recall everything he said. Oh God, I wanted you to do so and so, and I wanted you to do this. And now that you showed up, oh, I remember who you are. Uh, how could I be that? crazy to forget that now by the way let me tell you this do you know that's why god did what he did right you know how you, by the way, you know how you forget right i'm not talking dementia 
I mean, you literally forget things. You forget. Anybody ever forget their child at Disney World? You lost your child. You got away from it 10 seconds, right? I left my young man at the church. We lost. I left him. Both of us left him at the church by himself. Forgot him. Have you done that? <laughs> we forget. And it's like, really? I can't believe I did that. Now, man is going to forget. We all are, right? Boy, watch that. But have you ever forgot it? You ever forgot something like that? We forget. Things that you said I would never, and you forget it. Well, I'm going to tell you this. That's why God put the Holy Ghost inside of us. Can't forget now. And Lord, I'm with you always. You always have an unction of the Holy Spirit. Yes, no, yes, no. Always, every day of your life. You walk in the Spirit, you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Every day. I mean, God helps us every day of our lives. But Job says, oh, God, I'm vile. He saw himself. You know who God is? Yeah, but when I know who God is, I'm vile. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Now, this is an intermission. God shows up and speaks and says all these things. He stops a minute, Job. I'm, I'm just by our Lord. I'm not going to... and then God says, let me tell you again. By the way, you notice he speaks both times out of the whirlwind. In, in chapter 38, the Bible says, and the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. And it says again here, then answered the Lord and uh, Job and out of the whirlwind and said, gird up thy loins. Now, like a man, I will demand of thee and declare thou to me. It's like, well, I got it, God. I'm good. No, you're not. No, you're not. You don't know yet. You need to, I, I'm going to continue on. I'm going to make sure that you know. Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Disannul. Say, so you're going to put to naught my judgment, right? Is that what it means? Put to naught? Discredit. Are you going to discredit my judgment? What was what was God's judgment? I'm going to let this happen to you, Job, because uh, I'm proud of you. I know you'll come through it all right. Are you going to discredit me for what I've done to you? Now, anybody ask this, answer this question? How many of you, maybe I was going to ask, where was God yesterday when all that happened down there? Why does God let things like that happen? To me, that's a question that never get answered. Well, the, to me, to me, it's a, it's a question you can answer. The problem is people hate you for it. You see, God is just simply giving choice. When sin takes over, you say what ha happened there? Look how many did Stalin kill? How many did Hitler kill? How many did he torture to death? All those bodies Saddam Hussein had in that place stacked up, tortured to death. How many people, how many times does this happen through human history? And every time it happens, the first thing they do is take a microphone in front of some preacher and say, well, where was God having this happen? And you're going to say the same thing that Sister Helen said. He was there. Well, why didn't he stop it? Why didn't he stop his son dying? Why does God let sin happen? And you go back to the Garden of Eden and say, why did God let Job, what, no, excuse me, let Adam sin? Where was he at? Right there. Why? God is a God of choice. Men are bent on evil. The real question is, who was saved and who wasn't? Did you have the opportunity to be born again? Do you know Christ is Savior? Well, that's not matter. It's about death. God reminds us that it's not about death. He says that as it is appointed that the men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Under, on the top of that F5 for the priest, what did he have? They called it what? The breastplate of judgment. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The sinners go before the great white throne. What's more important? Are you saved or not?
a million babies murdered last year? Or was the president standing up and pleading for the violence to stop? Where was the Congress standing up pleading for the violence to stop? Where were churches praying last year when babies were dying and a man putting a tube in there, sucking out parts, tearing a baby apart? Where were they at? So when they asked me that, Brother Wendell, when they asked me, where was God at? I said, the same place he was when that man was tearing that baby all to pieces. God's waiting for you to repent. He wants you to repent of your sins. He's still willing to forgive you. No matter what you do, he'll still forgive you. You and I can't see that, but God can forgive it. God can. But there comes a point that that stops. There's been tragedy after tragedy for ages. God gives us a choice. But the choice is not about being safe on this earth. The choice is about what are you going to, going to do with eternity? By the way, did all the people that serve God live nice lives and never have any trouble? No. Hebrew writer said they were sown asunder. The lions tore them apart. Yeah, they were slain. Where was God then? Yeah, right there. Where was God when Stephen was dying? He stood up. Yes, boy. Why are you going to save him? Yeah, he saved. Thank you. So what's the more important question? Whether they're saved or not. So what is our job? We need to get them saved. Man can only see a tragedy, but he can't see the other tragedy. You see a man like Ted Kennedy die, and they put all this pomp and circumstance and all the things. I listened on XM radio back when XM was there. I listened to the funeral, to the night before the funeral, and it was a long speech that for two hours they gave on this man. And I'm thinking, he stood for everything ungodly. The majority of what he said was against what the Bible said, the abortion and the other things, he just the high-ranking things. So brothers and sisters, God has showed up and said, Job, do you know who I am? I'm going to shut my mouth, Lord. And he says, no, let me tell you a little further because I need to get it in your head. And this is the good guy, by the way. This is the good guy he's going after. But he's saying, you don't know who I am, do you? You're going to ask me, why did I let that happen? Don't ask them why, why they let it happen. Don't ask these Christians. Come and ask me. They'll ask you, why did God let this happen? And I say, go ask him, because you will face him one day. Ask him for yourself. I can't believe in a God like that. That's all right, you'll end up in hell. Why would you say that? You don't care. I don't care one bit about what you think about yourself, but you got to think about God. He's willing to forgive, but you're not willing to receive it. We've done so, out, so many outrageous things that God's forgiven us. He's blessed us, brothers and sisters. But these lost people don't know. They really don't. It's the church people who need to take a stand for the Lord. You know, take a stand. Look at it. He says, look, wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Are you going to do that? Hast thou an arm like God or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Are you like that, Job? No, you can't. Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath and behold everyone that is proud and abase him. Go ahead, Job. Do it like me. Be like me if you can. You Go ahead and do that. He says, cast abroad thy rage of thy wrath. Yeah, go after the people. You be, go ahead and take your wrath on people like I do. And behold, everyone that is proud and abase him, you go ahead and put him down. Verse 12, look on everyone that is proud and bring them low and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them under the dust together and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save you. <clears throat> do all these things, Job, and then I'll declare that your right hand can save you. You'll be God. Now he's going at them even harder saying, that's God's judgment. Hide them in the earth. Do those things like I do. You know, who am, I? who am I, Job? He is just laying it on harder and harder and harder. And I 
promise you, when Job gets done, when he gets done with Job, oh, I'll never say it again. I'll never ask God again. Never would I ever say that. If you do this, I'll confess that you're good enough. Your right hand can save you too. By the way, comments, questions. Does this make sense what he's doing to Job? It's really God saying, here I am. And Job says, I know who I am now. And God says, if you think you're that good, you can contend with me. Tell me about judgment. You're going to tell me what's right. That's what he says to the world today. Are you going to tell me what righteousness is? You're going to tell it to me that a woman's got a right to her body? Are you kidding me? That's what he's saying here. And if you want to do that, all right, you go have wrath. You do this. You act like God. And then I'll say, okay, you're like me. You can't do it. He's putting him to the test. Have you got an arm like God? Are you that good? Verse 15, but now, behold, now behemoth, which I made with thee, he eat his grass as an ox. Lo, now his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar, and sinews of his stones are wrapped together. People tell me that the, the rhino or the hippopotamus or something, as opposed to being uh, a dinosaur. His, his tail is like a cedar. Did you see that? Huh? What, the tail? Mm, it's more like a dinosaur, isn't it? Where's the strength? Strength's in his belly. He's so firm as he doesn't move, he don't move him. He moved with his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. You know what he's saying this? Job, you never were strong. You're nothing like this. You can't make this. Look what God creates. And by the way, he says, this was made along with you. Remember, they're all made on the sixth day, right? The birds and the fish were made on the fifth day, but the... Uh, uh, Animals were made, the cattle were made on the sixth day along with man. He says, you're not like that. Surely the mountains bring forth food where all the beasts are in the field of the field play. This behemoth, he lieth under the shady trees in the covert of the reed and the fiends, fens. The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook can pass him about. He's speaking about this huge animal that Job, you don't know what force is. I made him the same day I made you. The shady trees cover him, their shadow, the willows of the brook can pass him about. Behold, he drinketh up a river and hasteth not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. <laughs> That's a huge animal. Isn't it? Behold, he drinketh up a river. He taketh it with his eyes, his nose pierceth through his nares. No. This animal, Job, you are of nothing in comparison. You can do none of these things. You are nowhere to be like me. Then the next animal, verse 41, chapter 41, canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook, the sea serpent, uh, out in the ocean? Can you go, draw him out with a hook or his tongue with a cord without letting it down? The obvious answer is no. Now, many would say, what in the world is a Leviathan? Well, these are two of the great beasts that God is using, one on the land and one on the sea, to show how God creates all these. Job, you have no control over these things, as I do. Can you put a hook in his mouth and his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? No. Will he, will he make supplication unto thee? Will he speak soft words? In other words, will he be soft words to you? Is he going to be kind to you? Will he be afraid when he gets next to you? Can you do anything with this animal? And the answer is no, Joe. By the way, when you read about and people try to ask, where are dinosaurs in the Bible? This is the place, chapter 40 and chapter 41. Behemoth, which is on the earth. Leviathan, which is the sea. Those are the two animals we look to because he describes that he is the largest beasts that he has. And he says, you think that thing looks at you and makes supplication? Verse 4, will it make a covenant with thee 
Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? You're not, he's not going to be your servant. You won't control him. You're not going to ride him and put blinders on him, put a bit in his mouth, will you? Wilt thou play with him as a bird? Wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? No, Job, you can't do that. You're insignificant, right? I can't tell you how this is just simply about God showing up and saying, you contended with me. You asked me to show up. You made it sound as if I'd done something wrong. In front of all these people, where are you, God? Why don't you come? Why are you mad with me? Why do you do me like this? I'm not done. Why, God, why are you doing me like this? And God shows up like, why do you question me? When something happens, you go questioning God. Today, people question God. And God's like, you're going to question me? It was put in perspective for me that day with uh, Adrian. I remember him, Adrian Rogers. Preacher Adrian Rogers, remember him? Yeah. Adrian Rogers just put things so simple. And that's one of his great things is when you talk about how many children die every year. And when we get so concerned when somebody dies, and yet we let the babies get killed every year. And by the way, everybody in this room, you were once in the womb of a mother. Amen? Amen. Amen. He was in the womb of a mother. And Job has learned, I should shut my mouth and not question God. You know what this is called? Is it blind faith? No. Job now sees it. This isn't a blind faith. This is real. I got to believe in him when he's not around. He's being reminded. I'll tell you what, let's stop there, brother. We can't go any further. Right. Verse five. We'll start there next week. 41 and five. We're moving along, and I don't want to take too many times on the chapter because to get the big picture is just simply God saying, let me tell you who I am. And I believe for you and I, the answer for us is, who is God for us? We know who he is. We know exactly who God is. And when we do that, it puts us in the right attitude. And by the way, I would encourage you, as much as it's already started last night to be politicized about you got the gun lobbyists and non-gun lobbyists. Brothers and sisters, don't take sides. These are lost people. Just speak the truth, what God has said. There's mercy. God forgives. He's a merciful God. These parents need prayers. They don't need somebody to come in and try to use them for some political agenda. Whether you're on the left or the right, it doesn't matter. Those people have suffered a loss. They've suffered a loss. And as a whole, a city like that. They need our prayers of comfort. The God of all comfort can comfort them. But it's easy to get caught up in the politics. No matter which side you want to land on, simply as this. People are evil. Man is inherently evil. And anybody can fall into that trap. He said, well, they were, what are they, the radicalized? Or they, would, they, would, they just had something happen to them. Brothers and sisters, they made a choice. They said the radicalized, no, they made a choice. God gives you a choice. And when there's no deterrence to sin, when there's no deterrence, what God put government for, which is punish them if they do wrong, when that doesn't happen, this is what ends up. There's no deterrence. Well, I'm depressed. I got a right to feel bad, and I can do whatever I want to do. No, it's not. A, it's not appropriate. But speak the truth. Tell them what God said. You better follow what He says. You're going to die one day. Everybody's going to die. By the way, a hundred years from the day, everybody here in this message is going to be dead, or God will become. And the problems you've got right now really doesn't matter. It only matters what our relationship with Jesus is. Let's stand and have a word of prayer this morning. Amen. And by the way, don't forget, as I, I said Sunday, watch the motives of people. Okay, watch people's motives. Because right now, if that I, I saw, as Sunday when you saw how the people had ulterior motives, what they wanted to get, they just wanted to get rid of God so they could do what they wanted to do. Take a look around and see that, and, and pay attention. Because I can tell you, it's more rampant than ever. Churches are just faltering in that they're still trying to get more people to the church. Tell them about Jesus, man. God's got mercy. I promise you, God can comfort you, brothers and sisters. He can.
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege. Thank you for letting us come together. And God is Job, Lord. He looked at you and he covered his mouth. Lord, we cover our mouths this evening. For God, we know what not what to say. But Lord, we know we need to speak the truth. Lord, you're a God of love. Father, we pray comfort for those that have lost loved ones. Those that our hearts are hurting. But God, there's a greater problem this evening, Lord. God, we've heard these that have cried out for lost loved ones. Lord, that's the real need that you said that we have. It's the point that a man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. God, we're praying for our lost loved ones. Lord, they need a savior. God, would you touch that boy, that girl, that man, that woman, Lord. God, if it's not us, Lord, would you send somebody else by that they might hear the gospel, that they might be turned, Lord, Holy Ghost, that you can draw them to yourself, that be saved before it's everlasting too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. 